Hey guys, it's Fun from Makeup by Ren Ren. And if you want to see my tutorial on using the Luminous airbrushing system, stay tuned for more. Hey guys, so I'm back with another video tutorial and today my tutorial is going to be on airbrushing. I've done another airbrushing tutorial, but this one is going to be using the Luminous Air Beauty System, which is a little bit different. So I did a review on it, so if you want to see my review on the system, go ahead and check the link in the video description box below and my blog and I'll also, I'll tell you all about that. But today I'm going to show you how to use the system, so let's go ahead and get started. First off, you're going to want to start with a completely clean face and then follow it up with your regular moisturizer system. Um, I, I, I like to use a primer with this system because I noticed when I just used regular moisturizer, I got a little too shiny for my taste. So I use whatever primer I have. Luminous comes with a moisturizer slash primer that they um, have, which I didn't get. So I'm just gonna use a regular primer, but um, I do recommend this um, because it will help you from looking too oily. So I'm gonna apply the primer all over. Okay, and now what you're going to do is color match. So you get four shades of foundation in your kit. I have the tan range. It goes from F5 to F8. Um, the odd numbers, um, F5 and F7, are warm shades, and the F6 and 8, um, the even numbers, are cool shades. So I am a warm shade, so I'm, I knew it was going to be F5 or F7. So I'm going to show you how to swatch them really quick. So what you're going to do is just put two drops of the first foundation into the well of your gun. And then you're going to apply a stripe, an airbrush stripe, on this edge of your face. I kind of like to bring it up just in case you have different color variations between your cheeks and your jaws. But generally in this area it's good because this area matches your neck. So you're going to turn the button on the machine on. It's just one button and on off speed. It's a one speed system so there's no adjusting dial to change the pressure. And to control it, all you do is you pull back on the lever and the more that you pull back, the higher the pressure. So what you're gonna do is take your shades. I'm gonna start with the lowest, which is F5. All you need is two drops of the foundation. One, two. So you're gonna press the on and off button. And then it's gonna turn blue and light up. And then you can feel the air on your face. See how it's moving? That's where you know it's going to be. Now pull it away about six inches away and then do a stripe down your face. So as you can see, it blends right into my face, the F5. I already know that this is a match, but for the purpose of the tutorial, I'm just going to stripe all of them. But in between them, what you're going to want to do is clean out your airbrush. And this is what you're going to do after every time you use it or any time you switch colors. Put a little bit of your water alcohol mixture. I like to turn the compressor on and then I put my finger over the nozzle lightly and then I do I pull back and you can see it bubbling. That's going to mix whatever paint is in here and mix it with a solution and then you can spray it out. I actually like to dump out the first batch just to get rid of the dirty water. Do it again. Almost like you're cleaning rice. If any of you Asians out there know what I mean. You're going to back bubble again and there's going to be less dirt. Spray it out onto a tissue until it's, um, there's no paint coming out. You can see it coming out, right? And that's when you know it's clean. You're never going to want to push all the way back on your lever unless you're cleaning it because that's too much makeup getting sprayed and wasted. So let me go ahead and put the rest of the shades on my face and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I've swatched different ones on my face and you can see the different stripes. Here is F5, then you have F6, which is too light, F7, which is too dark, and F8, which is too yellow. So, the one, the F5, it went right into my face. You can't even see where I made the stripe, so that's my match. So what I'm going to do is just wipe those off, and I'm just going to use a baby wipe, and then, so I'm back to the beginning, and what you're going to do is take the right color, which for me is F5, my half empty bottle. And then they recommend six to eight drops. I feel a little bit more comfortable with about 10 to 12. So you're just gonna count them. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. 
if you like really perfect flawless coverage you might need even twice that but this is um I'm going to show you that you don't need a lot if you apply it the right way, which is done in light layers. I can totally do six to eight drops if I go slowly and build the layers lightly and it will look really nice. But mind you, don't get too excited and put a lot on and just pull it back all the way and spray it that way and think you're going to be done quickly and it'll look great because it doesn't look nice that way because the airbrush will be too thick and too wet and that's not how you're supposed to do it. So. Um, I have about 10 drops in here, and mind you, it didn't show you this, but you're supposed to shake the foundation. It is water-based, so it's very common for the airbrush foundation to separate, and you have to, you have to shake it up for a good couple of seconds. This, is, this goes for all airbrush foundation, and if you don't shake it, it won't look as good. So when you're going to um, put on your face, you're going to hold it like a pencil. I kind of like to put my finger um, up here for balance, and you pull it back. You don't need to pull it back all the way. Um, there's actually little tick marks on it. I wouldn't push it more than halfway because a lighter touch means a nicer finish. So when you do it, you do about a stylus width apart from your face, um, and then you keep your stylus moving. And that way you don't put like a big old circle right here where um, you left the um, stylus. So keep it moving, light pull back on the lever, and you're gonna start um, they say to start on the outside of your face and go in. I kind of like starting on my cheeks because that's where I need the most coverage and then lightly feathering out, but you can do it however you want. Just make sure to get everything, including right here because people miss out your ears and go down to your neck. So you're going to push the button on and then keep it a little bit distance away and pull back very lightly. You won't see the foundation, you'll more see like my skin just looking better and that's how airbrush works. So you can see it. I don't know if you can see the water coming out, but I'm light, I'm moving, I'm keeping it moving. And then you'll see that um, the redness is coming away from my face. So I'm pulling it back probably about one fourth of the way, and now I'm moving away, um, over. You're going to make sure to definitely get near your hairline. And if you need less coverage, like for me, I don't need a lot of coverage on my forehead, I pull it back even less. And as you can see, it kind of corrects everything. Pull back really lightly, and you do kind of like one layer. You can close your eyes as you go near the eye area. But under the eyes, I do like the sweeping motion. And you want a continuous flow. Don't pull, change the speed too much because uh, that you pull it back because you don't want any sudden burst. Then you can go into your jaw, and then you can go a little bit onto your ears, and that's the first layer. As you can see, my skin looks even, a lot more even. Um, I still have a good amount left, so I'm just going to do it again. And it's better to do um, a layer at a time because. Um, that way the airbrush doesn't get, the airbrush makeup doesn't look wet. If the airbrush makeup looks wet in your face, you've put too much or too heavy in one spot. You want to look light and fresh and just build the layers. If I wasn't explaining this, it only takes me about three minutes, so I'm going to keep doing it. Okay, so that's layer two. Now I have even more coverage. I went a little bit onto my eyes, and you can feel the wetness. Um, first, you can feel the air, and that's where you know where you're on your face, but you can feel how much foundation is coming out because it feels a little bit wet. Um, and if you're starting out, just try doing it with water at first, so that way you don't waste your foundation, and then you kind of know the feeling of um, the liquid coming out. So I still have just a little bit left, and I'm just going to finish my pass on my cheeks and on my temples where I need the more coverage. <laughs> Okay, and you'll know you're done because you won't feel the wetness anymore. And 
From there, if you want, you could hold it, you could turn it on and not even press anything and you can use it to kind of dry. Honestly though, if you go in light layers and you build the coverage, it shouldn't be that wet. So there's the coverage. And mind you, I don't have too much that I have to cover, but um, the video does show this one woman who had lupus scars really, really bad, and they showed you that you can cover it. The interesting about this is that you can put um, you can put concealer on after the airbrush makeup, and then powder, and then you can even airbrush on top of the powder, and it still looks really good, and that's how you build coverage. But I'm not going to do all that. I'm actually just going to apply some concealer. Um, they have a concealer from Luminous that um, they um, advertise, but I don't have that, so I'm just using my Eve Pro. And I'm just going to pat it right on top, and it's not going to disturb anything. Typically, I've always done concealer before. Airbrush because I didn't want to mess up the finish, but with this system, you can do it before or after or both. So I'm just covering up my under eye circles. Okay, so that kind of brightened it up. And if you want to, you could go back over it again. Um, the next step is you could just leave it like this. Airbrush makeup does not necessarily need to be set. Um, it's, but for my, in my opinion, I don't like the way it feels. It feels a little bit sticky. Even a couple hours later, it still felt a little bit sticky. So I like to set it with powder. Um, again, Luminous has their own powder. I don't have it. So I'm just going to use um, whatever I have. i um, using the Purely Cosmetics Diamond Powder and a powder brush. And you don't have to be conservative with this. If you, um, if you, like I said, if you have really bad scars you're trying to cover up, you can put a whole bunch of powder so that you melt the first layer into your skin, and then you can do it again. But I'm just going to use it to ma mainly kind of take away the stickiness and to take away the shine. I noticed that with this, um, it can get your skin can look shiny because this is the dewy formula. But the instant way to take that away is with setting it with powder. Or you could use the matte formula. Um, a primer helps too. You don't, and you don't even need to set the whole thing. You can just set where it gets shiny, which is usually here and here, um, and then leave the rest bare so that it has that dewy look. But as you can see, it has a nice finish. So I'm gonna um, show you the rest of the steps. Um, like I said, it's interesting because they say that you can airbrush on top of the powder, which I didn't usually do before. But I'm gonna show you now how to do the blush and um, the shimmer and the bronzer. Um, you can also take the darkest shade, which is, which, which is in your group, and contour that, so I'll show you how to do that too. So first I'm gonna highlight, I'm gonna use F6 because it was the lightest shade. And when it comes to this, you don't need a lot, maybe like two, two drops, four drops, because you're not doing your whole surface of your skin. So what you're going to do is you're going to put this on the areas where you need it, which is generally the cheekbones, down the bridge of the nose, center of the forehead, chin, above the lip. And this is going to give your eye, um, your face more lift and more contoured looking. So you're going to push a lot more lightly now. And what you're going to do is keep it moving and pull back. You can even do this under the eye so that it kind of brightens it. You can do it over here. And a, a really light touch goes a long way. You can go down the center of their nose. Chin, and you could even do above the lip. You could even go right into here, which is what's going to define your cheekbones. And you can kind of see it. And if you if it looks too strong, you can definitely just powder over it again, and it will absorb the. Um, it will kind of melt it into your skin a little bit more. So now I'm going to take the darkest one, which is F8. 
and I'm going to put just the same amount, just like two drops, and two here. And then I'm going to um, go ahead and play this where you put the contour color, which is down the sides of the nose, under here, um, on your temples, and I'm going to contour. Um, if you really want a good contour shade, I recommend um, for women of color F12 because it's um, darker than the F8. So let's go ahead and do that. Pulling back just a little bit, like barely. Okay, I did a very light contour. You can kind of see it from far away, but to be honest, this shade isn't dark enough for my skin tone, so I'd probably have to go up and buy a separate one. But you can kind of see the contour. And what I'm going to do is um, go over with bronzer, which is going to kind of re-emphasize it. You can use a bronzer to contour. I don't really use it too much for that because it has shimmer, but I'm just going to put it right here to kind of give more emphasis. So I'm putting it like kind of like underneath my... Um, cheekbones. Okay, so you can definitely see the contour a lot more. I know it looks a little bit strong, but remember you can always take the powder after and melt it together. So I'm pretty much done with the contour and the last step is blush. Okay, you only need about two drops of the blush because it's super pigmented and you have to do a really light hand of this or else you end up looking like a clown. So two drops at max. Then you're gonna hold it back and remember very, very light pressure and keep a nice distance so you don't hit one spot too hard. Keep it moving. Okay. Do you see the blush? Again, I don't like really strong blush with, I don't really like the look of a lot of blush. I like it to look subtle. So I only put a little bit, I'll put a little bit more just so you guys can see it on camera. Okay, so it's not a nice glow. Blush on airbrush is really nice in that sense. It will give your face a really nice glow. I'm kind of old school. I don't usually airbrush blush and bronzer and all that, that much because I like powders, but you, this is just to show you how you can definitely do this. So let it kind of sit for a second, and then you can go back with your powder, and you can be generous with the powder. Um, and this is from the Harvey web seminar on the um, website. Um, and then you can just kind of melt everything together by using the powder. He um, showed you how to use um, their kind of tinted powders, which they have like um, an ivory one, which is more yellow base, and then a more beigey pink one, and then the translucent. And that also gives more warmth to the skin. Okay, so as you can see, it kind of softens everything up when you set it. And you can see the contour, and you can see the blush and the highlighter. Oh, I forgot to add the luminizer. Let me do that one really quick. So I'm gonna put just two drops of the pearlizer. Don't forget to shake it. Two drops, and it's gonna give you that dewy look, which is perfect since I kind of matted myself out with that powder. So you're gonna put it on top of your cheekbones. And 
you can even apply it um, onto the eyebrow brow bone. And if you wanted to really do it low, you could go down the center of your nose, but you don't have to. It's kind of like, and then above the um, the cupid's bow to give you that plump little look like that. Okay, so as you can see, it did add a little bit of a light to my face um, here and here. And that's pretty much it. That's how you use it. It's really simple to use once you practice. You really got to practice and get used to it. Um, it's just like any kind of new technique. You got to practice. It's not going to be like if you use it for the first time and it doesn't work, that doesn't mean it doesn't work. It's just that you have to practice. And I usually just do um, airbrush foundation. I've been doing it before work. And with the airbrush foundation and cleaning it, it literally takes me five minutes max. Um, again, that's because I've been practicing it. But this is the look. I think it looks nice. It looks very flawless. Great if you're a pro makeup artist doing brides. Brides love it. Looks great on camera. So yeah, that's the final look. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Visit my blog, makeitbyrenron.com for the complete entry. And I hope that helped you guys. So until next time, have a great night. Ciao, Bellas.